Hey, I'm Stephanie, and today I'll be reviewing two of the priciest eyeshadows I've ever had the pleasure of playing with, namely two of the luminescent eyeshades from the brand Chantecaille. Now, I did not purchase these, nor were they sent to me by the brand. They were lent to me by a friend for about 10 days so that I can see if I like them enough to purchase one of them for myself. So, after an extensive review, I'll be sharing my thoughts as to whether these are worth the hefty price tag of $50. US dollars a pop. As always, I'll leave timestamps so you can hop, skip, and jump to whatever's most interesting for you. Now we're going to jump right in by talking very briefly about the first thing I interacted with the packaging. This component doesn't feel cheap, but it doesn't feel particularly luxurious either, and that surprised me a bit because at this price point, we're not just paying for the eyeshadow, we're also paying for a luxury experience. And with packaging that feels like it could have come from MAC, whose latest connecting color palettes have a very similar sort of packaging with an image and a gel coating just like this on them, and that palette is at a much lower price point, I just feel like this isn't giving me luxury vibes. But the images on these shadows are quite majestic and also functional because when I see the animal, I know exactly which color I'm reaching for. As someone with a lot of makeup, that's something I really appreciate because there are several brands out there who use the same exact packaging for every colorway of their eyeshadow, which makes it hard for me to know exactly which one I'm reaching for. So I definitely appreciate the fact that these have such beautiful images on them that are also functional. And they also designate what a part of the profits from each individual shadow will go towards. For example, for the elephant shadow, a certain percentage of the profits will go to benefit the organization Space for Giants, which helps to protect elephants in their natural habitat. And the cheetah palette, for example, um, a share of these profits go to the Cheetah Conservation Fund. Now let's talk swatches. These shadows have quite a special finish that is very difficult to capture on camera. Even the Shantikai website doesn't do these shadows justice. And I remember when these first came out watching all the reviews and people were talking about how beautiful they were. And you know, I was watching the footage and thinking, well, sure, they're pretty, but I didn't really get what everyone was getting so excited about. Then I saw them in person and I got it. They are pretty special. So when I was doing these swatches, I recorded the footage in direct sunlight because I wanted to show you how impactful the shine really could be. And I noticed that the dimensionality of the shadows actually really came to light when the footage was blurry, strangely enough. When the camera was in focus, you could tell that they're pretty, that they're dimensional, that they're shiny shadows. But it was only when the footage was blurry that you could actually begin to see the different colors and textures in the sparklies emerge. And that dimensional sparkle, that's what makes these shadows special. And that only really comes across in person. So if you were thinking of getting one of these as a special thing for your wedding day, the specialness probably isn't gonna show up in your pictures, but of course you and your wedding guests can enjoy it. The cheetah shade is a warm champagne color, but in person, I feel like there's just a slight undertone of neutral pink in there. So to me, it's almost like a pale gold mixed with a faded pink. And that makes this a great brightening shade, but in an organic sort of way. This is a great everyday eyeshadow for someone like me and my skin tone because I have deep set eyes. And so using a color like this all over the lid can really bring my lid forward and make me look more bright eyed and awake. This also makes a lovely inner corner highlight or brow bone highlight. I particularly liked it on the inner corner of my eyes because it gave me kind of a glisteny wet look because um, the, the tiny glimmering glistening particles in here that make it a luminescent eye shade, they're kind of a mixture of pale gold and faded pink and it's just a little bit magical. The elephant shade, on the other hand, is a shimmering taupe gray that has just enough warmth to it to prevent it from looking ashy. And the glimmering particles in here are much more multifaceted than in the cheetah one. In this one, in addition to silver particles, I can see gold, I can see blue, green, purple. I feel like it's almost like all of the colors of the rainbow are represented in the sparklies in this particular shadow. 
I think this would be a great one and done shadow for a lot of people out there, especially because it's so versatile. I know that this color is very intimidating to some people with very light skin because the base of the color is so dark, but it is very easy to sheer out to create a daytime, everyday office friendly looks with this. And it's also just as easy to amp it up and get a much smokier look if you're going out in the evening. And I personally enjoyed wearing this shadow on its own as a one and done shadow, but I find for me, and because of my eye shape, I'm always going to gravitate towards lighter colors for the lid. So even though this can be sheared out, it's just not the shade for me for a one and done shadow, but it does look beautiful on the outer corners or used as an eyeliner. And I used it on the outer corners to add some depth to my look today. As a side note, I was able to swatch the entire line in store, so I'll insert that footage here for some context. All of these shades are very wearable, especially because they can be sheared out so easily. But hopefully you'll be able to see from the footage, not all of them have exactly the same degree of shine or the same degree of dimensionality. Some of the sparklies have different colors in them, whereas some of the other shadows only have very monochromatic sparklies in them. I felt like the most original shadows from the line were probably Elephant and Rhinoceros because the base shadow was one color, but the sparkly were very diverse. And I also liked Pangolin, even though the whole thing was very monochromatic, pale lilac. I just felt like that's a color I don't see very often, especially not in combination with that impactful shine. So now let's talk application and wear, and let's specifically begin with the sparklies, because in my experience, any luminescent shade like this that has these particles in it does tend to have a little bit of fallout. And these were no exception. It wasn't dramatic, but it was enough that I would say that it's smarter to do my eyes first and do the rest of my makeup afterwards just to make sure that I can get rid of any of the sparklies I don't want hanging out under my eyes. But the good thing is that once this makeup was on my eyes, I didn't get any additional fallout throughout the day. So points for Shantikai. I tried several methods of application with these as well. As with most shimmer shadows, my fingers worked really well. When the oils from my skin mixed with the powder from the pans, I felt like it just went on really easily, stayed really well, and it was great. And I also tried using these with three different types of brushes. I tried them with synthetic brushes, with natural hair brushes, and also with fusion brushes, which combine synthetic and natural hair. And I found that my natural hair brushes were my favorite with this formula, although Though the fusion brushes were a close second. Um, and my particular favorites with these shadows were the uh, Esam brushes W23 and W21, which are both sable hair brushes. And they're essentially the same brush, just a different size. And that's what I used for the application footage today. I also tried applying these both wet and dry, and surprisingly, they looked the same both ways. But I did find that there was one difference, and that's that I was able to use less product and get the same effect, which I think is nice. The way that I used these wet was that I would go in with a dry brush into the pan and then I would take the brush and I would spritz the brush with a fine mist of water because uh, these aren't specifically wet to dry formula shadows, I don't think. So it's not like Tom Ford where uh, I can be a little bit less precious about it because it's that formula is meant to get wet but these shadows first of all i'm borrowing them so i want to take particularly good care of them but also just in general with eyeshadows like this that aren't specifically made to be used wet i tend to always go into the pan with a dry brush and then if i want to use it wet i will always only wet the brush once the product is on it and i felt like that worked really well when it came to wear, these were great. I tried using these with several different primers. I used a Laura Mercier caviar stick, an about face matte liquid eyeshadow, uh, my Urban Decay primer potion, my Milk Hydro Grip primer, and also no primer at all. And to be honest, for the most part, I felt like these shadows wore exactly the same no matter the priming method I used. The one exception was the Milk Hydro Grip primer. That did give me more sticking power and more longevity. Activity. Now I have oily partially hooded lids and that means that creasing and fading are simply a fact of life with nearly 
any eyeshadow for me, but I do have to say that these held up really well, especially with the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. That primer was the one that really made the difference for me. But even when I wasn't wearing a primer, although I did see that these faded throughout the day, it wasn't dramatic and they faded evenly. So the eyeshadow still looked great from when I put it on to when I removed it at night. Secondly, when it came to creasing, I found that it mainly creased where my hood meets my lid, which is just a critical spot for me. That's just always going to happen. But at the same time, almost no one ever sees that part of my eye. So I feel like it's okay. But I noticed that when these did crease, they seemed to crease attractively. And I think the reason I liked the way they looked when they creased was because on those balding spots on my lid, there were still remnants of sparkle there. So none of my eyelid was ever completely bare. So I actually really liked the way these wore. Just for the sake of a mini wear test, I did my makeup a little over 10 hours ago. I worked at a desk all day, then I did some yard work, and then I got rained on, and I haven't touched up my makeup at all. So I haven't added any powder, I haven't touched up my eyeshadow. The only thing I did before this video was add a little bit of lipstick, and that was it. So I'm gonna get up close and personal with the camera so that you can get a closer look at how this eyeshadow looks after that scenario. Now, this is the point in the video where I would normally delve into my makeup collection and search for some either dupes or things that kind of give me a similar vibe so that we can look at some comparisons. But I'm still traveling and that means I don't have access to my makeup collection. So instead, I thought I would discuss some formulas that I think have some things in common and we can do the comparisons that way. As I mentioned, I used the Chantecaille shadows both wet and dry. And alone that fact just automatically makes me think of the Tom Ford wet to dry formula. And these are different. When I use the Tom Ford wet dry formula, using them wet intensifies the shadow, using them dry gives me a subtler look. And with these, I got the same look whether I applied them wet or dry. It's just that I was able to use less product when I used them wet. So they're not similar in that sense. I also found that the Chantecaille shadows have a piecier sparkle than the Tom Ford wet dry formula tends to have. Now, I mentioned that these shadows and their dimensional shine are special, but are they as special as the Pat McGrath special Astro? blitz shades? And the answer is these aren't nearly as intense. I almost feel like Chantecaille tried to make a version of the Astral Blitz shadows for people who thought the Astral Blitz shadows were like too intense. And I think they did it well because this is just much more subtle. But I think especially the elephant and rhinoceros shades in this formula, those two are the most special in this line and thus the most similar to the Pat McGrath formula. But if you're looking for intense shine and texture, Pat McGrath would be the way to go in that case. This is a much more natural, kind of quiet, elegant sort of look. Natasha Denona also makes some very special shades, especially the ones that she designates with a K in the name. So shades like Galaxia from the Mini Retro Palette or Kava from the Gold Palette. Those are the really textured, super shiny shadows. And I did kind of get those vibes from this elephant shadow because of the multi-dimensional sparkle in here. Even though this shade is very different from Galaxia, um, color-wise, it kind of gave me Galaxia vibes vibes just because of the multidimensionality of the sparkle and the luminescence. But if you're once again looking for intensity, Natasha Denona would be the way to go. And if you're looking for that subtle elegance, once again, Chantecaille wins. Now for the ultimate question, do I think these single eyeshadows are worth 56 US dollars? The answer is, it depends. If I had a friend who just really loved makeup and I saw that one of these colors was just them, that they would get a lot of use out of it, then I think this would make a gorgeous gift because most of the makeup lovers that I know, when they're looking at the money they're going to spend on their makeup, they're usually more willing to spend it on a palette at this price point than a single eyeshadow because the palette is gonna give them more options. And so I feel like if I were to give a makeup lover something like this, they would really enjoy it and really appreciate it, but it's not something they would necessarily buy for themselves. So in that sense, I think this would be great. So we now know that I think this is a beautiful gift. So is it beautiful enough that I would purchase it as a gift for myself? And the answer is at this point in time, no, 
And there are several reasons for that. Number one is that I don't feel that any of the colors in this line would add value to my collection as it currently stands. And I'll explain what I mean by that in the context of this alluring cheetah eyeshadow. I already have a relatively large makeup collection with so many gorgeous and special eyeshadows. So as tempting as this cheetah eyeshadow is for brightening my deep set eyes, I have to keep in mind that at home, I also have the Tom Ford Nude Dip Palette. I have the Tom Ford Suspicion Palette, both of which have pale champagne gold shades in them that serve the same purpose. And I also have a couple of Pat McGrath shadows that are just as special as this one and serve the same purpose. And even though the shades that I have at home are different to this one, the Tom Ford shades are more metallic, for instance, whereas the Pat McGrath shades are more textured and these Chantecaille shadows have a more delicate sort of specialness to them, the reality is they all kind of do the same thing. So as beautiful as this is, purchasing this wouldn't add value to my collection because it wouldn't make my collection more versatile. Because ultimately, I can already achieve a very similar look to this with things that I already have. Another reason I won't be purchasing these as exquisite as they are is because I'm currently in the process of trying to curate my collection. And that means that I'm just trying to limit the amount of things coming in so that I can really focus on using what I have so that I can figure out what my true favorites are and what the gold nuggets are in my collection. And if you're interested in following that journey, then you might wanna check out my Panning for Gold series because that's where I get into some real nitty gritty makeup comparisons and decluttering. But these shadows are pretty dazzling dazzling in a classic sort of way. So who might think these are worth it? Well, if you have been on the search for a delicately dimensional eyeshadow and you don't have one in your collection yet, then one of these might potentially add value to your collection in that case, and then picking up one of these might be worth it. But if you are thinking of doing that, then I would strongly suggest if possible, and I know it's not always possible, but if possible, I would suggest going to see these in store and swatching them there because although they're all beautiful and they're all luminescent, they all have a different type of sparkle. Some are more monochromatic, some are more multifaceted, some have higher shines, some have a more subtle shine. And so if you're gonna spend this much money on an eyeshadow, it would be ideal to go see that in person because even between these two shadows, although they're both shiny, this one has more monochromatic dimensionality, whereas this one is much more multifaceted. Or if you're a makeup minimalist who loves luxury, who can really appreciate a delicately dimensional sparkle and enjoys elegance, and you can find a color in this line that you would just love to wear every day until it's all used up, then one of these shadows might also be for you. But with such a scrumptiously saturated makeup market out there, I feel like we consumers really benefit from an abundance of choice and many magnificent options, including some very special shadows at a much more affordable price point. So sparkly, yes. Splendid, yes. Special, also yes. But $56 special? I'd like to know what you think. Have you purchased any of these shadows? Would you purchase any of these shadows? Are you looking for a reason to purchase them or not to purchase them? I'd be really curious to know because I have to confess, over the course of my testing of these two shadows, Shantikai came out with their wild Mustang line where they added two new shades in this formula plus two new matte shades. And I, I have to say, I am curious. The shades look right up my alley. And I have to admit, at one point, I had all four of those new eyeshadows in my shopping cart. I didn't pull the trigger, but I was tempted. I, I exercised self-control though. I do that sometimes, once in a while. As for me at this time, as painful as it is, I will be passing these two shadows back to my friend without purchasing one of my own. But, I very much appreciated the opportunity to play with them for a few days. If you enjoyed this review, I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, say hi in the comments, all that jazz. And if you wanna talk some more about makeup, I have the perfect video for you right here. But even if you don't, have a great week. And I hope we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style.